All right, I'll note the witness has been sworn. Before we proceed with testimony, let me just inquire. Uh, Ms. Rind, have you watched any of the trial testimony on the uh, broadcast of this trial or seen anything in person here since this trial started? No, sir. All right. Have you talked to anyone else about testimony they've given during trial? No, sir. Okay. Thanks for answering those questions. Ms. Beatty, if you'd like to inquire, you may. Thank you, Your Honor. Can you state your full name and then spell your last name? Yeah. My name is Ashlyn Renee Rind, R-Y-N-D. Where do you live? Chandler, Arizona. How long have you lived in Chandler? 22 years now. Did you know an individual by the name of Tylee Ryan? I did, yes. How did you know Tylee? We were best friends in high school. Do you remember approximately what year you met Tylee? I want to say 2016 is when I met her. And what high school did you attend with Tylee? Perry High School. Perry High School. Mm -hmm. And that's in Chandler? Yes, ma'am. What kinds of things would you and Tylee do together? We would go on drives together, talk about just teenage things, you know, our high school boy drama, drama with friends, um, what was going on in her life, what was going on in mine. We would just spend a lot of time together just hanging out like at home and stuff. Did you feel like you knew Tylee pretty well? Very well, yeah. Did you ever go to Tylee's house in Chandler? Yes. About how often would you visit Tylee at her house? Frequently, I would even say once a week, maybe twice a week even. And in visiting Tylee at her house, did you ever meet any of her family members? I did, yes. I met Charles, I met Lori, JJ, um, I met Alex before too. And could you just briefly describe kind of uh, what you observed about Tylee's relationship with JJ? Almost maternal in the sense that she was always there to make sure he was cared for. First priority was making sure his well-being was always taken care of and she would be next. And tell us who Alex was. Alex was her uncle um, and he was also, I want to say, Lori's brother, but just another family member who was around for Tylee and would be there in case like Lori or Charles wasn't there. About how often did you interact with or see Alex Cox? Not as often. I would say maybe six months of the year I would see him. Um, not saying like I'd see him six months. Once every six months might see him. Okay. Did you make any observations about the nature of his relationship with Tylee? Friendly. It seemed very much the normal teenage to uncle relationship. Um, they joked around a lot, had a good relationship there, and I know he offered her a place to stay when she needed it. Did she feel comfortable with Alex from what you could observe? She did, yeah. Okay. At some point, did Tylee move away from Chandler? She did. She moved to Idaho in 2019. I remember moving to Texas before that, too. And let's start with when she moved to Texas. Do you remember approximately when that was? In 2017 or 2018, during my junior year of high school. And just to be clear for the jury, when she moved to Texas, did she come back to Chandler at some point? She did, yes. She came back for a short period of time. And then uh, I want to say maybe six months later, it was, we're going to go to Idaho. So while she was in Texas, did you stay in contact with her? Yes, yeah. And when she returned to Chandler, did you continue to spend time with her? Yeah, the second she got home. Mm -hmm. Do you remember approximately when Tylee moved to Idaho? That must have been... I want to say sometime in September of 2019, end of the summer. Did you stay in contact with Tylee after she moved to Idaho? Tried to for the two weeks that I had. And then after that, it kind of fell off. So I wasn't able to. Okay. Your Honor, if I could have just one moment. Yes. And I have no further questions for this witness. All right. Thank you. Mr. Pryor, you can cross. Thank you, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Rind. Good morning. <clears throat> Ms. Rind, you mentioned that um, Alex was around. You maybe, maybe saw him every six months or so. Every so often, I say that roughly as an estimate, um, he was a truck driver. So with his work and with my schooling, I wasn't able to always see him. 
So the opportunity to observe him is when he was in town occasionally and you saw, would you say it was a handful of times that you saw Alex interact with Tylee? Essentially. Yeah, I would. Less than six times. In my experience. Yeah. Maybe more than that, just because she was living with him. So I would see them interact when he was home at that point. Okay. Now you described, and, and you recall getting interviewed by uh, Officer Wright from the FBI. Do you recall that? I don't recall the name, but I do recall being interviewed by okay. local agents. And you talked a little bit about the close relationship that Tylee had with JJ. Mm -hmm. And in that interview, you described that it was, and you said it again today, that it was a very maternal relationship. Mm -hmm. Um and that the two of them were very close. And you were aware of JJ's special needs, correct? Mm -hmm. And would it be fair to say that JJ relied on Tylee for a lot of her, a lot of his um, basic needs? I would say he wasn't relying on her, but she was there for him. I don't think JJ really was like, this is who I rely on. He was going for anybody who was going to provide for him. Um, but Tylee would always be the one to show up. Okay. And, and, and she was a strong support system in his life. Yes. And should she be gone, he would notice that. I mean, he depended on the regularity of seeing uh, Tylee as part of his uh, support Your system. Your Honor, I think I would object. We're calling for speculation on the part of JJ at this point. Sustained. Needless to say, as part of his support system, what you observed, he relied on her as part of the support system in his life. Would you agree with that? I would agree with that. Okay, Judge, I have nothing else. Thank you. All right, thank you. And, Your Honor, I have no redirect, and this witness is excused from uh, her subpoena. All right. Is she under any subpoena from the defense? She is not, Judge. She's excused. Okay. Thank you for appearing and providing testimony today. You can be excused. Thank you. You're welcome. State can call its next witness. Judge, at this time, the state calls uh, Dave Sensorbo. I swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give, but we just read the whole truth about the Okay. All right. Um, now that the witness has been sworn, let me just inquire. Have you been observing any of the trial testimony that's taken place in this case? No, I have not. Have you talked to anyone else about any testimony they've given? No, I have not. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Wixom. If you'd like to inquire, you may. Thank you, Your Honor. Sir, will you please state your full name and spell it for the record? My name is David Sincerbo, spelled S-I-N-C-E-R-B-E-A-U-X. And are you currently working? Um, I... I'm retired from the Idaho State Police. Okay. And when did you retire? Um, February of last year. What did you do for the Idaho State Police? I was a forensic chemist, um, primarily did controlled substances, but also did fire debris cases. Okay. How long did you do that work? Um, for 26 years. Prior to doing that for the State Police, uh, where did you work, if anywhere? Um, I worked as an environmental chemist down in California for 10 years with two different um, organizations. Okay. And how many years did you spend working for those two organizations? Um, about 10 years. What did you do for them? Um, with the exception of what I was analyzing for, I was basically analyzing for um, gasoline and um, some pesticides. Okay. And can you, let's go back to your work uh, for the Idaho State Police. Uh, what types of cases did you become involved with where you would analyze accelerants? 
Um, suspected arson cases is the simplest thing. Could you just describe a, a typical case that would come in for that kind of analysis and, and what you would do to analyze? Um, typically, the evidence would come in in a friction lid can, basically a paint can. Um, it could come in a couple different ways. Occasionally, we would, but primarily it would be in these cans. Um, they would come in, they would contain, um, lack of a better word, fire debris, basically burnt stuff. 